I literally already have tomorrow's video for WWDC on what actually happened done. So tune in tomorrow. But today I want to talk about what's actually going on tomorrow and what we think and that we, I mean, Mac rumors, front page tech, Apple Insider, what everyone thinks is going to happen. So let's get started. Okay, let's start with the start of the show, the Apple VR headset. This will be somewhat like the MetaQuest Pro and MetaQuest 2, and probably the MetaQuest 3 when that comes out in September, but it will be different too. It should be 200 grams, which is a lot lighter than most of the other options, other than like the Nreal Airs, and it's been in development for a while. They have apparently pushed it back multiple times, and we're expecting to get the first glimpse of Dub Dub, although it probably won't launch until September. It's meant to have a thin and light design, which should make it more comfortable than other products, and it will be made lighter by a battery pack, which you wear at the hip, and kind of looks like a mic battery pack for school plays if you've ever seen one of those. Now, hopefully, the battery life will be around two hours, because if it's any less, it would be pretty much unusable, but the only problem is you might not be able to charge it and use it at the same time, which would make it really annoying to use as you would have to charge it, use it, charge it, use it, and that's not fun to do. The display on this is probably gonna be two 4K micro OLED displays from Sony with 4,000 pixels per inch, and it's not bad. Like, this display is gotta be really good because it's right up in front of your eyes. You can tell pixels the closest when they're up in front of your eyes. If you look at your hand, you can probably see more pixels, even though you shouldn't be able to, but you probably could. Imagine they would see more pixels than looking at a computer monitor screen that is a couple feet away. The way they're actually going to have input could be multiple, but what seems like the most likely now is that they're gonna have a bunch of cameras that will track hand movements, leg movements, and facial gestures, plus some other scanners, like maybe even eye recognition so that you can log in easily, which is so cool. Like, it's so cool that they've gotten to the point where they can actually do this. Also, there might be a feature called air typing, which has been in multiple rumors where you could type by pressing letters in the air or do other things similar to it. There will also be lighter scanners in here, like we probably expected. It is also probably expected to have Apple Silicon, which obviously, why would they use Intel or AMD? And it will probably have an M2 processor, although it could be an M2 Pro or M2 Max because who knows what they're gonna do. This will probably be very, very expensive. The operating system that this is most likely to be called is XROS. XR standing for extended reality. It will be a lot like iOS and it will have Safari photos, messages, Apple's music, FaceTime, and a lot more, hopefully making it easier to use in 3D. It will also hopefully be able to run iPad apps through a algorithm that makes it look a lot like the MetaQuest 2. They're also working on trying to make it have a dedicated Apple TV app and health app and all the other apps that Apple One has included so you will be able to use Apple One with it. Obviously, this will be an iCloud device. I've already gone over most of the main features, but Max Rumors has its rumored main features to be dual 4K micro OLED displays with 5,000 nits brightness and 4,000 pixels per inch, over a dozen cameras for monitoring face expressions, hand gestures, and mapping the environment, iris scanning authentication, virtual and augmented reality capabilities with digital crown to swap modes, M2 chips, including high-end main processors and lower-end processor sensors, XROS operating system with 3D optimized apps and option to run existing iPad apps, air typing and hand gesture controls, and an external battery pack worn on the hip, again, like a microphone you have in a school play. The next thing that I want to talk about is a 15-inch MacBook Air. Now, there have been rumors about this for a while. Luke Miani literally has been asking to do this for as long as I've been watching his video. It would make a lot of difference to the MacBook market. There is currently a 13.6 version of the MacBook Air, but really, it's not that big of a size. Who needs 13.6 inches? My 14-inch MacBook Pro is probably the smallest I'd want to go if I'm, you're even going to try video editing on here. The only problem is that it probably won't get a 3 nanometer chip. So it will probably get M an M2 chip, which isn't bad, but you know, you probably want it. And it will probably not get the 120 hertz screen, even though this computer is basically based on screen. But I mean, it will probably have a better battery life just because it's bigger. Rumored key features from Mac rumors include display size around 15.5 inches. Well, duh. Design and features set aside similar to the M2 MacBook Air. Obviously they just 
prove that design and I think it looks really good. And the M2 chips inside with offering eight core and 10 core GPU variants. M3 chips not expected, obviously. Another one that I don't think as as likely is a, is a new version of the Mac Studio. Apple launched the Mac Studio originally in March of 2022 with the M1 Ultra and M1 Max chips. And I don't know if they would really want to refresh it so early. It's such an expensive device that who knows, they might just want to put that stuff in the Mac Pro and call it a day so MKBHD can stop droning on about that. But now we have to get to the actual part that WWDC is about. The software. Mac OS, iOS, iPad OS, Home OS, I don't think that's an OS, but anyway, all the OS's that Apple has made and keeps iterating on. But let's start with iOS. iOS 17 is off, is supposed to offer some requested features and it's probably not gonna be a huge upgrade. Hopefully it will fix some of the bugs. I will have a short link below talking about where I talked about that, but it really isn't the greatest operating system in the bugs department. With iOS 16, Apple introduced a lock screen thing with widgets and customization, and hopefully they might add more fonts, more widgets, and make it just more functional in iOS 17. There is a bit of a rumor from Mark Gurman to turn the iPhone into a smart home display so that when it's placed on a horizontal orientation charger or stand, it will show a different look and basically be easier to use. They're also expecting them to add more features to Dynamic Island, which would be nice because Dynamic Island, however cool it is, is kind of lacking functionality. The key features on Mac Rumors for this are the lock screen home hub display option, dedicated journaling app, which I actually think that would be really cool. Maybe when you're going home from work or school on the bus, you can just write down what happened that day and then you can remember that and if you're ever bored, you can just scroll through and see what happened during the days. And then finally, mood tracking the Apple Health app, which I don't think is as cool, but it could still be used. Also, find my improvements, obviously. Support for sideloading apps in Europe. Probably only Europe, because Apple doesn't want to make other people use Google Play or other app stores, but the EU has been pushing for a lot of stuff, and Apple can't really say no. And finally, performance. There will probably be a pretty big performance efficiency and stability improvements in this OS. iOS 16 has been buggy, as forementioned, and I hopefully think they will fix that. Next, XROS. This is completely ideal. This, we don't know anything about it, and we don't know even what they're gonna do, because there is nothing like it. The closest is whatever OS me the MetaQuest runs on, but that doesn't really count. So I'm kinda gonna skip over that, because all of these are ideas. Next, macOS 14. Literally nothing. We know basically nothing about it. Even though they have been using the California themed running for several months, so some of the available names include macOS Rankin, which sounds horrible. macOS Mammoth, which I can see them going with. macOS Shasta, which sounds a bit odd. macOS Farallon, which, uh, macOS Diablo, which I think sounds cool. macOS Sequoia, also sounds kind of cool. macOS Sonoma, sounds kind of cool. macOS Grizzly, mm, and macros what redwood i might have said some of those names wrong but i kind of hope they go with either mammoth or diablo they, they both sound really good apple could also go with a name that is not trademarked because what we're actually looking at is what they've trademarked to use in the future as they did with mac os high sierra and el capitan where they just trademarked it after they made the os because it isn't that hard to change the name of an os like if venture was already copper they could just switch to diablo or Sequoia or Sonoma. As for features, we don't see that much. Probably the same journaling app that's coming to iOS and then updates to Find My and Share Play, but not much else. So we honestly don't know much about it. Finally, watchOS. WatchOS is not that big updates. Hopefully we'll get in new widgets on the home screens and stuff to make the home screen better because the home screen sucks. It is a pain in the butt to organize and it just does not look good. TVOS and HomePod software don't really care. It's probably not a big upgrade because it's a TV box and a smart speaker, big deal. If you do wanna watch Apple's keynote, I will link the YouTube link down below and I will link the Apple link. The Apple link is usually a bit behind the YouTube link and I just prefer YouTube. So I will probably be watching the YouTube one, but when if you don't wanna watch that, I will have a hopefully about 10 minute video out on my channel tomorrow. So you can tune into that and I'll see you there in a day.